discussing the issues and celebrating the successes of the African-American community. This is Another View. Hello everyone, I'm Barbara Ham Lee. Welcome to Another View. Before we get into tonight's discussion, get a pencil and paper to take down some important information we'll have for you later in the show. Now, from the devastation in Haiti, to politics and race, to African-American leaders in Hampton Roads with their own set of troubles, there's plenty for our pundits to talk about. Here with no shortage of ideas is Vivian Page, a blogger with blog.vivianpage.com, David Squires, columnist for the Daily Press, community organizer Bill Thomas, and Roger Chesley, associate editor with the Virginian Pilot. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome Happy back. Happy New Year. Oh, yeah, we haven't been together since 2009. Now, everybody I got a lot of response from the show the last time. They love you all, but we're going to have civil discourse and we're going to be polite to each other, correct? Amen. While we talk, there we go. Okay. So, January has not been very kind to some African American leaders or people in leadership positions in the Hampton Roads area. We've got Carolyn Myers, who's retiring or resigning in June. Um, Stephen Jones, just uh, a day or so ago, announced his uh, leaving. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, let's see, Chris Mosley, who was the head of uh, Chesapeake General Hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, David Seals, who was with uh, Wavy TV. Yeah, they had a layoff there. He was laid off. Um, and who Michael am I Towns. missing? Michael Towns. Michael Towns. How can I forget Michael Towns? Yeah. What's going on with our leaders, Vivian? Well, I, you know me, I'm not a fan of the term leaders. Leaders are born, not made. And simply because someone's in a position uh, doesn't make them a leader. But what's going on is we just happen to have a rash of things circumstances that are creating a situation where people are losing their jobs or people are not comfortable. The uh, situation with Michael Towns is a long, long story of, of difficulty with dealing primarily with light rail, but also some other issues related to like $80,000, Missy. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are just people moving on. I mean, I, I don't know exactly what happened to the situation in Chesapeake with Chesapeake General or the Chesapeake Health uh, mm -hmm. guy leaving. Um, of course, uh, Mr. Jones from the superintendent here in Norfolk obviously has been under fire quite a bit. Uh, it's just, a, it's, a, it's a matter of people who are in positions end up getting fired when they don't deliver. Whether they're black or white, they end up getting fired. It's just so happened we happen to have had quite a few blacks that were in positions that, that obviously had to take responsibility for these yeah, things. Yeah, it just seems like, David, that there, it's just a conglomeration of people. And because we have so few leaders, African Americans in leadership positions here. Right. And it when just feels like there's a lot going on at one time. Well, they say when uh, America sneezes, African Americans will get pneumonia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and, so, and the impact is greater because we do have so few that, you know, when, when you start losing those few, you're down to even less than what you had. Mm -hmm. But I say that, but I also say, you know, it's time for some new blood. It's time for some new blood because, you know, mm -hmm. The, the, something like she, she hates to turn leaders, leadership, I, you know, I think, uh, I think leadership, probably, black leadership probably gets a C plus. I think we need some new blood, some new ideas, some younger ideas to come in here and be more aggressive as uh, leaders. C plus the, the, the two things that, um, with at least two of the people, uh, Dr. Myers, I think, had part of the problem was she followed a very popular uh, president, somebody who had done very well, and Dr. McDemon when she was there at Norfolk State. Uh, unfortunately, I think she made some uh, bad political moves. The, the problems, her disappointment or disagreement over light rail coming around the campus, uh, the decision to try to at first possibly hold AFRAM Fest and then not. And then there were all sorts of questions about her leadership. Was she doing enough in networking with city officials? With networking with community officials, I think all that played uh, against her. Mm -hmm. um, the issues with uh, Michael Towns over at HRT, you, you almost wonder if, for him personally, whether it would, been, would have been better off if the federal government had not decided to fund the, uh, the light rail system, because that seems to have been his, down, his downfall. downfall. Right, and maybe if that hadn't been there, he would have been bopping along. Mm -hmm you know, with everything else that had been going along with HRT. I, I, that has been a difficult project for a system that was very limited, was just confined to buses to try to pull off. And it seems like now the amount of the system is going to be much more in line with what some people had thought the total amount was going to be all along instead of the much smaller, I believe it was $232 million that was originally cited. So 
for those two cases. I'm not so sure about some of the other uh, officials. Yeah, because we don't know. Bounce. We don't know a lot about the gentleman from Chesapeake, for example, right. in terms of why he suddenly resigned. But um, Bill, I, I see you over there smiling. No, no. Here's <laughs> what I know, uh, and uh, from what Roger's saying, uh, I know uh, Dr. Myers. She's had some of the largest contributions made to the university in the history of the university. I know that their research opportunities there are off scale in terms of what they're doing and what she's actually delivering. And uh, it's disappointing that she wasn't allowed. And she should have argued with the city of Norfolk. The monstrosity that they have over there behind her house and that campus should not even have been allowed. It, it doesn't look good. It's not attractive to the university just from an aesthetic standpoint. But it's but, but the, the prior president had already, had already, had already agreed. agreed. I agree. I agree. So, I agree. But so the city... You know, We're thinking. relying on it. We're right. relying on it. But she has a right to make an argument against that. Michael mm -hmm. Towns went out, and I'm in Washington a lot, and I've seen him argue just outstandingly for funding of the light rail. And it was a challenge for him to bring the money in to get it started. And then once he got started, once he got everything going and he's been commended for his good work, he's out. And he's out just because we don't have any grassroots black community and, and folks there that are supporting these people. And, and, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a challenge. The guy turned the hospital in Chesapeake around. And there's always issue. America's a zero-sum game. Somebody makes a buck, somebody loses it. When the economy's turned down as an, econ as an economist, I know that things started getting strifle. But we're the last to get hired and the first to get fired. And that's been since slavery. And that still exists today. And we just got to deal with it. I, I would Roger. tend to think that in a lot of the cases, though, and, and I talked to a lot of people after uh, some of the stories that come out yes, about mm -hmm. Dr. Myers and as well some of the officials who were on the HRT board. Um, without saying whether race did or did not play a role in it, you are going to be judged, at least in part, on whether you are on delivering. Your exactly. Right? And, that, and that's and, the one thing, because each of these people had something very different going on in their individual Absolutely. circumstances. Absolutely. I mean, I look at the town situation, and while race has a, has, obviously has a role in it, the truth is it was an impossible situation. We had, we, we did the, they did that bare bones design, $232 million. Yeah. No one ever expected to get federal money. No, it, it was not, mm -hmm. no one expected it to happen. So while we sit here and look at, at Towns losing, losing his job, resigning actually mm -hmm. was what, mm -hmm. what happened. Um, while we see that, it wasn't because he was black that that happened. It was just simply because circumstances were were greater than the cost of this thing was going to end up being more than what we thought. You Myers know, is different, though. Yeah. When you were on Kathy's show um, a couple of weeks ago, you made a comment that you felt that he wasn't going to resign or that wouldn't no, happen. No, I didn't to him. say that. He, I said he wasn't going to get fired. And I want to be you very said, clear okay, about that okay, because good. because the truth is is that he didn't have the votes to get fired. Those people who were inside mm -hmm. that room will tell you that there were the votes in there to fire him were not there. Uh, so, so yeah. you know. I, it's interesting. When he came in and talked to the uh, Virginia Pilot Editorial Board several years ago, this might have been as far back as 2002, and he originally discussed the project. I mean, one of the first questions I wanted to get out was, well, how much, of it, how much is it going to cost? And they didn't really want to say that until the end of that meeting. I think they realized that the price tag was so large that maybe this was something, and I, and I believe Randy Wright might have been in that meeting as well. Mm -hmm. They knew it was going to be a long shot, but right. it came in. And then once it came in, they had to try to deliver and get that system up and running. Yeah, but, okay. the, but, the, but the bottom line is yeah. the public transportation system in Hampton Roads sucks. It sucks. And so maybe this is a wake-up call right. to, to get some real input, to have the real solution, to have a real workable public transportation system because what we have right now is ridiculous. But, but that's decided by the city, uh, by the city by officials and what they're willing to tax their, their own residents and, and to well, what Well, even if they talk about the Midtown and they talk about tolls and all of those things. Go but ahead, the Bill. question is leadership. It's not race, it's, it's leadership. Yeah, sure. And then what happens in our community, it's, it's, it's as David has said, uh, somebody has a cough, somebody has pneumonia. Uh, it's not about that. And it's just atypical. I haven't seen any bank presidents fired from Wachovia who lost a trillion dollars. In fact, they're still supporting that stuff. How many of those names have you seen in the paper? You haven't seen any of it. When they, when they blew up the uh, Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel and they stopped it for a day or two because they have, didn't do the proper maintenance, who got fired on that? So I'm just saying our community is weak and we don't stand behind our people and, and this is what happened. It shouldn't have happened. Michael Towns, any board member, and I've been on boards before, you get monthly reports at a $300 million investment, Roger, 
at, at a $2 capital recovery cost, it would take you 150 million passengers just to recover your capital. Everybody knew that. Well, I know we got we could talk about transportation mm -hmm. all day, but we got some other topics we need to get to. Were you at the inauguration? Yes, I was. I figured as much. Absolutely. <laughs> and your thoughts about our new administration? Love those red pants. Oh, oh, good. <laughs> no, 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 no. Here's, 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 here's where we, we, we know Governor uh, McDonald. I, I know Bob McDonald, known him for 20, 30 years. And, 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 as, and as I've said to everybody else, you know, Democrat, Republican, it doesn't really matter. It's not what you say, it's what you do. And, and I think he's going to do better. I think he's going to be more open to suggestions and, and bring more African Americans into the, 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 the scheme of things, as he will everybody to try to get stuff done. I think he's going to be different and he's going to be a different leader. I see the twinkling. Your eye. <laughs> if his inauguration was any indication, um, uh, uh, the program itself, how much he's going to bring in African Americans, mm -hmm. the only person, only black person who participated in his inauguration program, Courtney McBath gave the benediction. So, there, so, so, your, your so you know, the idea of... that, 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 that McDonald's going to bring in a whole lot of people of color into his administration is probably not going to happen. But, you know, that's not to say that McDonald is not going to try his best to do some other things, but I don't see him, you know, filling the ranks with with uh, black folk, except well, the K. Cole James the, family. The K. Cole James family, which, <laughs> which don't you guys feel to find that a little weird? No, but, well, I, but I think he's I not going to bring in black folks. He's going to bring in qualified Virginians to do qualified work. But three people. Well, I would like them to be of all colors, who, well, exactly. whatever the qualifications are. As opposed to three are. from one family. Uh, yeah. Right, three people from one family. Uh, but we do have a new Secretary of Education who is right. African American. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So I, there's, I, there's one. <laughs> I, I'm, more <laughs> concerned, <laughs> I'm more concerned about what is he going to mean for. Virginians of all racial, uh, you yes. know, of all races. What is, what is he going to do in terms of jobs? What is he going to do in terms of transportation? Parents, I, quite frankly, you know, he's touting this big deal about getting the rest stops uh, back open. I, I really think that they could have stayed closed and everybody everywhere could have known the financial strait that we don't have the three million dollars. Where's the three million dollars coming from to open them back up? Yeah. No one right. seems to know that we're at a four point two billion dollar deficit. Where's the three billion? Where's the three million dollars coming yeah. from to open them up? Indeed. What's going to be cut in order to open up rest? And he's already pulled his transportation plan off the table. Apparently, he didn't have. So I want to know plan. where where is he going to get the money from to do anything anyway? People don't care about transportation now. They care about jobs. Our kids are graduating from universities. They can't get jobs. They can't get any kind of job. They have to move. My daughter moved to Washington, D.C. and mm -hmm. to, to do some things before. And, and that's what people are concerned about. We are a tourism state. The people that are coming into to the Virginia, to the Commonwealth to visit us, we have to have these stations open because so that is, that is driving us money. Well, well, the no, 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 no. We have visitors coming here all the time. But Tourism probably drives our income one or two, and, we, and the sales tax that come behind it, we have to have those things But if open. we don't have transportation covered, then all the jobs in the world, I mean, that's part of yeah. the reason why the Ford plant left here. They said they couldn't get their cars out of here. It, so that's why we're talking about maybe a ferry. We're going back to the future. Exactly. Ferry. We're having right. ferries that's being talked so, about to go so from the peninsula to the south How are you going to get a job if you can't get to it? Right. Trans transportation can create jobs. But it seems to me like Bill was saying that we're, we're a tourism state. It seems to me like he's making the case for for my casino plan at Fort Monroe. Roger, I know you think I'm crazy. Yeah, and you, I don't know <laughs> what you mean. <laughs> yeah, so, so Have Steve you been with the some of those Fort casinos Monroe elsewhere. Project. What, talk to us a little bit about that, David. I mean, when I talk to politicians off the record, in private, they all think it's a great idea for raising revenue to have, have casinos. It would bring jobs, it would bring revenue. And, and you also, with Fort Monroe on that property, you could also have the nature preserve. You could have a music park. You could do some different things with that nice chunk of land over there. I mean, what, what else can bring in that kind of money? People in, in Ohio, they had did the same thing that Virginia did. They had voted against it, voted it down around the same time that we did, but the, in this last election, they voted to, to have casinos. But casino I, I think NPR just this week had a radio spot talking about how there's such a glut of casinos in certain parts of the country now that with each, right. yeah, yeah, with each additional one, it's, it you're kind of diluting the right. possible tax uh, re recovery and tax But we could use entertainment down here, though. Well, we, 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 could, we could use education, <laughs> but, and but we could talk about Steve Jones. What we have to do foremost is educate our children. Because the jobs of the future, you may not even need a car. 
You, you may need a device that you can do your work from. That, that can be defeated, but what I'm saying is that if we don't educate our children, if we don't do a better job of having decent outcomes of 16 African American males graduating from the city of Norfolk Public Schools a couple years ago, we can't have that. Where none of our children, especially the guys, are getting into the UVAs, the Virginia Techs, and the Wimden Mary. We can't do that. We have to look at education. We have to look at charter schools, not a cure-all, silver bullet for anything, but it's going to get competition in the lower zip code inner city, we used to call ghetto schools, that aren't producing the kinds of activities that we need to have to, to get our kids educated so they can complete globally on so, the internet. So what I, exactly I'm, is the governor supposed to be doing or, or is Steve Jones supposed to be doing? I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, no, uh, no, you're good. Go you know, I'm, I'm just saying, uh, I'm not exactly sure where you're going with this. I mean, what, what do you think needs to be done in terms of making that happen better? I mean, we do, yes, we need parents to be more involved in the schools. Yes, we need to make sure our kids are, are passing tests, but um, I think some of that's being tried now. I think, yeah. you know, I think, I, think, we, I think we have to lower the cost of administration. Put the administrators out in the, out in the field. Put them at the schoolhouses. Let's reduce that. Let's take that money and then hire new teachers. You can't tell me whether you have a mommy or daddy at home. After 13 years of education, you can barely read or write. I can't understand that, Roger. That's well, what well I, I, I think a lot of that goes, uh, again, to what the parents are doing, whether they actually have any college education or have finished high schools themselves. I mean, a lot of that starts at the home. So, uh, unfortunately, a lot of times, especially in the inner city districts, divisions of Portsmouth and Norfolk, they have to try to educate but they don't, aren't always getting the same quality kid to start off with. I think that it's very, very, very important that people understand. We, yes, education is, is really the most, the key to, for all of us. It's our only option to get out, get out of poverty, get out of all of those things. But we have to have a community buy-in into understanding how valuable education is. Norfolk is sitting here with schools that in the past that have done quite well, won the broad prize and the whole nine yards, but other school divisions have actually caught up. Other inner school divisions, mm -hmm. inner city school divisions have caught up with Norfolk and surpassed us. Part of what has to happen is Norfolk has tried to attract people to increase the tax base, try to attract people whose children don't go to Norfolk public schools mm -hmm. and yeah. put them in private schools. Mm -hmm. um, Part of what has to happen is the community has to understand that it floats all of our boats for Norfolk Public Schools to be as good as they can be. Absolutely. So therefore, we yeah. have to we have to invest in our schools with our not necessarily with our time with our money, but as much as it is with our time. We've got to figure out ways of mentoring. We've got to figure out how the community can embrace the schools so that we can actually provide real serious serious role models for these kids. One of the things I was talking to somebody about yesterday, as a matter of fact, when we grew up in the neighborhoods before integration. You know, we'd grow up and we had the, 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 everybody lived in the same place. You know, so you had the role model sitting right there with you. The preacher was there, the school mm -hmm. teacher was there, mm -hmm. whoever was right in the neighborhood. You had the village. You know, the village and there. so we had a community. And so once, but once people start moving out and the people start leaving that could leave, then what we end up with sometimes is the people who couldn't get out. And so they, their options when the they're looking drain. is that they don't have, they don't have sitting in the community the same role model. So we've mm -hmm. got to, we've got to figure out a way how to engage engage so that we can bring people back to the community and bring people in the communities and understand how critical it is to make these kids that well, I, think, well, I think we have to be honest though with education and the broad award is, is as commendable as they try to build it up it was a competition against urban schools we are globally competing against all schools in the world and then we have to be honest with our children. We have to be honest with the reality of what's hitting the rubber, hit the road. So that's why I'm with Bob McDonald on creating charter schools. So then I can get my kids out of these urban schools and then get them to the village that I want to go to, use my tax dollars to facilitate the kind of education that I'm going to support. But right. I, but that's, 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 that's no panacea. That's not solve the problem. I didn't say it solves look, my problem. Look, the, the thing we have to look family. at right See, now, that's the problem. we have to make sure that, that these budget cuts don't cut teachers from classrooms oh. because right now there's barely enough teachers in classroom as it is. We're at the bare minimum. If we cut teachers from classroom, classrooms get larger already. Most teachers can't function without without a, without an instructional assistant. You got to have eyes in the back of your head these days. So That's we got to have enough teachers. In the, the question is whether or not is are we are we 
a community or are we all in this for ourselves? In other words, if it only benefits me I, and I don't care about the rest of the people in the community, mm -hmm. then by all means, put in charter schools. I, or, or, or if I can afford it, let me take my kid out of public school and put, and put them in private school, okay? Or do we want, or do we want to float the boats of everybody? Mm -hmm. Somewhere along the line, we lost this idea that we float the boats of everybody, that, if, that we all benefit from everybody doing well. Where the Constitution does it say that I float everybody's boat? What constitution are y'all reading? Well, you, you got know, a constitution. And I do have a constitution. You talk about being <laughs> a community organizer. I am. Amen. How can you organize if you're not being inclusive of everybody? I'm going to get a boat, and I'm going to put it in the water, and everybody getting the boat's got to roll. You can't <laughs> sit up in a boat and not roll. you got to work. I think we're getting a little bit too far into the analogy. Okay. No, it isn't. I mean, That's a fact. I mean, I have... We have too many people I that are not doing anything. Personally, I have children in have Catholic have school, and... And I'm glad that they're there, and, I'm, and I love the fact that they can have that type of education. I'm Catholic, but I also think that we should try to buttress the public schools as best we can. Okay, and I don't we got to stop we, at that okay, point because okay. we are out of time. You guys are fabulous. I do, and I didn't even get to two other topics that we wanted to talk about today. But we're going to do this once a month, and we're going to okay. examine the issues. And I so appreciate you being with us today. Thanks so much. Oh, we appreciate, I appreciate it. it. And our thanks to Vivian Page, David Squires, Bill Thomas, and Roger Chesley for their insights. Up next, Chicago. Chicago style stepping, but first a look at what's happening in Hampton Roads. the dance floor recently, you've probably seen it done. The suave, stylish, and often intimate dance moves that are Chicago-style stepping. Our Lisa Godley recently spent the evening with both professional and novice steppers for an up-close look at this popular craze. Whether you're new to the stepping genre or like Chandra Satchel grew up around it, Chicago-style stepping draws you in, turns you around, and spins you about with such style you'll keep coming back for more. I grew up in Chicago in Gary, Indiana, and I grew up watching the dance, but I never learned the dance myself. My parents did it, all of my friends' parents did it, but I just never learned myself. And about three years ago, um, we had an, a, a master stepper come to town and I went to the workshop and fell in love with it. Chandra now teaches stepping, and like many of the instructors we spoke with, she's noticed how the dance's popularity is growing. It is an intimate dance. Um, it, it's a couple dance, and you make it as romantic or as close as you want to. It really harkens back to a time when men treated ladies with respect. When, we, when the guys ask you to dance, they come to your table and ask you to dance, take your hand, take you to the dance floor, and bring you back to your chair when it's over. I like how you can walk into a room, if someone else knows the same dance that you do, the guys lead, the ladies follow, you can have fun for four minutes without saying a word, but you can absolutely communicate with your partner. I can tell you, hey, I want you to turn to the right or move to the left. And again, I may forget your name or never even see you again, but for that four minutes, like it's, it's great conversation. Patricia Page Taylor just started stepping in November. She says it's not as easy as learning a line dance, but she's determined to learn the moves because she loves the dance. But dancing with a partner and knowing how to step and move when they do, that takes a little bit longer. And so when I saw it, I was like, okay, I need to learn how to do that. It's good. It's very good. In addition to their classes, each week a group of steppers meet here at the Tropical Delights in Virginia Beach. And boy, do they have fun. All of us are a family, so we all know what our boundaries are. You know, if that's your husband, that's your boyfriend, you can get a little closer. If that's not and that's just your friend, then you, you hold back a little bit. But, um, but it is a romantic dance. You start in the whole position and then you break out of that whole position. But you come back to home, and I call it home. You always come back to the home position and start again. Well, I think the basic steps, they can probably learn in probably two to three months. Um, it, I mean, it's generally a basic eight count. Um, and I think, it, you know, with, obviously with practice, you know, a person can really learn just the basics of it in probably three months. Now, we take it to another level with different types of turns and different types of reverse turns and things of that nature. And that probably takes about six, six months to a year to just get used to doing that. Once you learn the basics, Chicago-style stepping can easily transition from a couple to a trio. 
And for special occasions, dancers form a line and peel off one at a time. Chicago style stepping is for the mature adult. The average age of steppers between 30 and 45 years old. But that doesn't stop people of all ages from loving the dance. After I got good and comfortable with what I was doing, I, um, I started um, teaching myself, you know, because I just want the dance to grow. Not only is stepping good exercise, but it can also take you places. Some travel to places like Atlanta and Las Vegas, even L.A., just to get their step on. Regardless of race, it's definitely something that um, if you like dancing um, and if you're looking for a mature style uh, environment where you can have great food, great fun, a great evening, um, Chicago style stepping is definitely, is definitely the genre of dance for you. For another view, I'm Lisa Godley. And if you'd like more information about Chicago style stepping in our area, log on to our website at anotherview.tv and click on Stepping in Hampton Roads. Now, at the top of the show, I asked you to get a pencil and paper because I want you to write down this website, www.visionhamptonroads.com. Here's the deal. The Hampton Roads Partnership, along with other community leaders, have put together a plan for the future of, of the Hampton Roads region. Now they need your comments. Get involved. We tend to complain that our voice is not heard when plans are being made. Here is your opportunity to let these folks know if this plan is a good one. You have until February 5th to let your voice be heard. Visit the website, read the plan, send your comments. It's your home and it's your region. And thanks for joining us next week, the relevance of Black History Month. We'll see you next time on Another View.